how to spot a phony Christian is the tagline. Why? Because that's what this book is really all about. It's the first chronological book written in the New Testament. doesn't appear that way in your Bible, but it is. And the reason why is because Satan is an evil uh, entity. He's doomed. He's a loser. He's going to the lake of fire. He knows he's lost. Christ defeated him on the cross. And so guess what? He couldn't stop Jesus rising from the grave, and he couldn't stop the birth of the church. So what's he do? You read the New Testament. False brothers, false apostles, false teachers, okay, and false prophets. What's that? Fakers. He sends fakers into the church to try to take over the church and ruin a church so that if people do come, then they get a fake gospel, a false Jesus, and a false God, and they join Satan in the lake of fire. So the Holy Spirit, uh, inspired, working through James, brings out this first book to stave that off, that attack from the evil one, and begins to give you signs. How do you know you got a faker in your midst? The problem is, God, he's, the good news is, he, he tells us this would happen, and he tells us how to spot him. The church isn't doing that today. And what we're going to see again today is that's the big problem. You wonder why we're in the apostasy? Because non-saved people have not only flooded the church, they've taken control. James chapter 4, he says it's this mixture of worldly and godly, saved and unsaved. Fakers and real is what causes, listen, fights and quarrels in churches. We don't need a political savior. We need a spiritual savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If, keyword, if a revival, and only God knows, is ever going to happen before the seven-year tribulation, because you're never going to stop that. That's part of God's time clock. But if there's ever going to be a real genuine revival before we're out of here, before that event, Revival starts with God's people, not the world. Well, welcome to Understanding Our Times. I'm Ken Michael. Joining me is Pastor Josh Schwartz. And the video you just heard was from our good friend, Pastor Billy Crone, Sunrise Bible Church, Henderson, Las Vegas. He's been on Jan's program a number of times. He's joined us at our Understanding the Times conferences that Jan used to hold. Billy Crone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the program. Hey, Ken and Josh. Uh, glad to be on. Thanks for having me. So the video that, that we watched of you talks about the false prophets, false teachers, the apostasy yeah. in the church that were, that's running rampant everywhere. But what I want to talk about it today is what's happening right now with the church and specifically as it relates to Israel. There's a lot going on in Israel right now. We know that the war is raging. We know that the nations are coming against Israel right now, trying to get them to stop advancing, trying to get them to stop taking out terrorism, basically. And unfortunately, not just the apostate churches, but those churches that preach the gospel, that are sound, but they're not standing up yeah. or even speaking out against what's happening. What's your take on what you're seeing in churches right now? Well, again, it's another prophecy related uh, aspect. Uh, in the last days, Paul says, you want to know that you're getting close in the last days. Don't just look at the world. You're going to see uh, false Christ. Uh, number one, you're going to see um, uh, wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes. You're going to see the rise, you know, the birth pain signs. And we're familiar with that. But there's also signs in the scripture uh, in the church that you're also getting close, just like those other signs. And one of them is, of course, the apostasy. And, and Paul talks about this uh, in Timothy. He shares with him, he says, uh, here's a sign you're in the last days. When you see in the church, by and large, okay, here becomes the new modus of operandi to, quote, do the church. And that is all you will get ever from the pulpit is basically tickling of the ears and turning away from the truth. And it says there the motive is their own selfish desires. Right. And again, if you break down uh, what's going on there, uh, it's funny, uh, selfish desires. It's uh, actually where we get the word idiot from. And so the church is going to act like a bunch of idiots because they're going to get not Christ centered, not scripture centered. Right. It's not about God. It's not about the gospel. It's not about his program. It's all about self. Number one. Uh, number two, because it's all about self, they only want to have their ears tickled, which is the Greek word kinetho, which means to only desire that which is pleasant. And then the third thing it says, they turn away from sound doctrine and they turn aside to myths, which is muthos, which literally means stories made up. So how do you know that you're in the last days? Well, look at the world. And when you see false Christ appear, false messiahs, when you see wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and all that starting to increase, leading towards the seven-year tribulation, that's a big sign. But guess what? 
when you see this in the church, you're also in the last days. Number one, they're going to get extremely selfish. It's about me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity. I only want to hear what I want to hear, specifically only that which is pleasant. And I, I, I don't care. I don't want to hear the truth, really. I, I just want you to tell me stories made up. Ken, what did I just describe? What's going on today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. James, you started off with James. I love that book. Uh, it, it took only 48 weeks to get through chapter one, but who's counting? Uh, but there's so much there. James tells us how to spot these fakers that have been there from the get-go. That's part of Satan's plan. But because we're not teaching the scripture and it's all about self and what self wants to hear and stories made up, not the truth, they've taken over the church. And so this explains now getting into the Jewish aspect, right? Studying about the Jewish people, hello, the whole Old Testament, which is the backbone of what we have with the New Testament, the covenant, right? It's a major chunk of the Bible. But people don't want to hear that today, Kim. Because they don't want to be taught that. They want to be told about how to build up your self-esteem or be financially successful. They literally, dare I say, want to be lied to. I don't just make up a story, man, about your cat fluffy in the third grade and how wonderful you feel. Just tell me anything. Just don't tell me that the economy's bad. Don't tell me that I might have to live for Jesus Christ or actually sacrifice. And tell me about this news over there in Israel in the Middle East. And well, I, I, we don't, we don't want, we didn't come here for that. And the reason why that's also happening is because churches cater to that uh, because their new modus of operandi is not about spiritual growth. Jesus said in Matthew 28, the very his last words before he ascended to the right hand of the Father was go out into all the world and make disciples. Disciples is mathetes in the Greek. It's where we get the word mathematics. It means disciplined learner. And so Jesus said last words, hey, get out there and don't get pew sitters. Don't just get a bunch of people to show up in a building. You get out there and you make disciples, disciplined learners of what? Of the word of God. But see, that's not the modus of operandi in the church today. It's all about numbers. And in order to get those numbers, then it, it doesn't even matter if the people are saved or not. That's not even the focus. It's then you downplay the word of God and you only tell them that which is pleasant. And guess what? You'll get your numbers. But I say this all the time. Hey, if you got a church of 500 or 5,000, 15,000, I don't care because that's the new goal. A successful church is the one with the biggest numbers. No, it's not. A successful church is one that is obedient to the Great Commission and obedience to teaching the whole counsel of God, which you know that you're teaching the whole counsel of God when it's not just about pleasant things. Number one, you preach the word in season, out of season, it, then it will correct you, it will rebuke you, okay, and, and then it will encourage you. Well, if you sit there and you you never get corrected or rebuked, somebody is lying to you. But a successful church is one that focuses on that. That's not what they're doing today. It's all about numbers, numbers at all costs. Now, what happens is there's a spillover effect. They compromise because, again, in order to hold those numbers, you need big, giant buildings. Well, big, giant buildings come with big, giant mortgages. And so then it creates this vicious, horrible cycle that we've been seeing for a long time. Well, I can't teach the truth because if I tell them something unpleasant, uh, then guess what? They're going to leave. If they leave, then the finances go down. Then we're going to go belly up. We're going to go bankrupt. We can't afford this building name. Ken, that's this that's the seduction of Satan, and it's destroying the church. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you hit it right on the head. Not only the numbers, but— the bizarre programs. It's it's become an entertainment center where yep. it's wrapped around music and then entertaining. I mean, yep. I know you've talked about it. We've talked about it. Some of the most bizarre entertainment uh things that we've seen pastors doing on stage, whether it's uh, swinging from a wrecking ball or getting their hair cut or the hip hop dancing or whatever. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just become complete apostasy and you're right. So let's continue on with this now as far as it goes with Israel. Uh, last week we saw 143 countries vote to have Palestine become part of the United Nations. Unbelievably, so far the United States abstained from that. They didn't vote for it, but right. I believe it's only a matter of time. Aren't we seeing the setup, and we talked about this earlier, for the Ezekiel 38 war? I want to get your take on that. And then are we about to see uh, Psalm 83? What, where, what's your take on that, or where do you see that? Yeah, well, first of all, with the Jewish people, and basically what you're talking about is the rise of anti-Semitism that we just turn on the news. It's right there. And not just across the world. That's been going on for quite some time, unfortunately, but even here in the United States of America. That actually has been going on for a while, too. But what the big bombshell is, 
from the church, the, the professing church. Are you right. serious? Exactly. You guys are anti-Semitic. And then all on the one hand, they'll say, oh, no, we're not anti-Semitic. Yeah, but your silence is declaring you're anti-Semitic because you need to speak up. Now, again, if you would teach the whole counsel of God and not cherry pick or, or just do just pleasant things and pop psychology and stories made up, then you would see that on the one hand, we don't condone this, but on the one hand, you shouldn't be surprised. It too is another sign that we're in the last days. You go back to Matthew 24, mm -hmm. Jesus clearly speaking to the Jewish people and is going down in a chronological list of the events of the seven year tribulation. He said that it's going to get to the point where speaking of the Jewish people, all nations will hate you because of me. And so we know Jesus warned, and it's going to uh, eclipse into the seven-year tribulation, that all nations, what's all nations, Kim, Josh? It, all nations. That's all. Every right? nation. So yeah. at some point, it's not just going to rise, it's going to get to the point where the whole planet is against them, right? Uh, because they follow God. And then, of course, we add more details to that. Uh, the eclipse point comes in the midway point of the seven-year tribulation, when you got the abomination and desolation spoken of in Daniel chapter 9, Matthew 24. Paul also talks about that, where the Antichrist goes up into the rebuilt Jewish temple and he declares himself to be God. Zechariah kicks in where he says, now, the, of course, the Jewish people say, we ain't worshiping you. And then they kind of like have that oy vey moment where like, oh man, did we get duped? We made a treaty with this guy and he's the Antichrist. God's spirit uh, uh, moves upon them, and uh, one third of the Jewish people are sovereignly protected by God, Revelation chapter 12. But two thirds, Zechariah says, are going to be slaughtered. It's going to be a horrible time, right? But the Bible tells us that this is going to happen. Another, as crazy as it sounds, another Jewish Holocaust is coming. And, and, and so, again, if you teach the Bible, you're going to see this. So, and, and I say this all the time, and a lot of my, uh, uh, Jewish Christian friends uh, will say the same thing. Uh, the best thing right now you could do for uh, a Jewish person right now is to lead them to Jesus Christ. Because yeah, the well, Bible we can, is very clear. We can decrease that two-thirds by preaching the Thank gospel you. to the Jews. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and because, and the reason why it gives us urgency, we're not condoning what's going on. But if you teach the Bible, what a concept, then it, then you see what God said is coming to the Jewish people. The good news, bad news. The bad news is two-thirds are going to be slaughtered. In the seven-year tribulation, the good news is God's not done with Israel. Replacement theology is a lie, and he's going to sovereignly protect one-third because he still needs to fulfill the Davidic promises, which will happen in the millennial kingdom with the return of Christ and we, the bride of Christ, Revelation 19. But but because the Bible is clear that an unfortunate Holocaust is coming again on the Jewish people, that should spur us on, hey, it's common sense. I don't have to pray and fast for 15 years to figure out what I need to do in light of this horrible behavior I don't have to go to a prayer and fasting conference with meals included, ha, 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 uh, to, to get a word from God. God tells me what's coming. And so a normal response is I got to get out there and tell as many people as I can back to the Great Commission. Uh, and certainly the Jewish people, listen, God said this is what's coming. I love you. I, I, I want you to come to Christ. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. It tells us exactly what we need to do. We need to get the gospel out, right? Because, as you said, there is one way for them to avoid what unfortunately is coming again, uh, which is what we're seeing with this lead up with all this anti-Semitic uh, Semitic behavior. There's another Holocaust, but they can escape it if they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior right now. Amen. No, I think that's extremely important because that's how the gospel begins, right? You've got all nations there in Matthew chapter 28, but then also uh, when with Peter's uh, sermon in Acts chapter 2 and Jesus' message in Acts chapter 1, you go to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. And what did Peter do in Acts chapter 2 in Jerusalem? He spoke God's word truly to them, explained the gospel clearly to the Jews there in Jerusalem. And what was their response? They were cut to the heart asking, what then shall we do to be saved? Yeah, exactly. And again, that's what it said in the, in the nutshell. Uh, yeah, we need to pray for them. We need to speak up. And dare I say, uh, it's it's also a moral issue if you look at it biblically, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're talking about uh, people wanting to commit, and and they and the the Hamas and the others, uh, the Muslim community around there, they've been saying this for years. They they don't hide from it. The U.S. media hides us from from it, and you have to go to alternative sources. But they're calling for the mass genocide of the Jewish people. Right. And so how, how do we not speak up? It's a moral issue. If, if as born again Christians, uh, 
We speak up against the murder of people inside the womb. Then how could we not speak up when adults are being murdered and called to be murdered, Jew or Gentile, outside the womb? It's a no-brainer if you teach the Bible. Right. Yeah. You've got to have a biblical morality to understand that life is valuable. Exactly. Exactly. But you won't get that if you go to the apostate churches that don't teach the Word of God. That's the mess that we're in. Mm -hmm. Well, Billy, uh, we're going to have two parts with you. Is there anything you want to wrap us up with uh, as we close here? And then we'll talk about uh, a couple events that we have coming up. Yeah, well, again, you know, the other big prophecy sign, of course, that we're dealing with is, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, Psalm 83, possibly. You're looking at uh, Ezekiel 38. Uh, and basically, you got these, uh, is back to, with Ezekiel 38, you got what most believe would be Russia uh, coming together with uh, select uh, Muslim nations, dare I say, surrounding Israel. And they're going to come and try to invade Israel. And that was a 2,600-year-old prophecy. Uh, and so, so if, and that's what I've been personally tracking too, uh, on top of everything else we've been looking at, uh, are we getting close to that event? Well, you look at every single one of those nations that are mentioned, uh, certainly in Ezekiel 38, every one of them are rattling their sabers, man. And, uh, and so to me, uh, it's another indicator as Christians, we don't know the day nor the hour of our departure, but you are seeing these last days events, uh, come into play. Um, and if anything, uh, we we know how it ends because you read uh, 39 and these people are going to be absolutely slaughtered that come against Israel. Uh, and and so, again, I'm not condoning what they're doing and even the aftermath. But my point is for the born again Christian, it should be another reminder from God that time is running out, meaning that our departure, the rapture has to be getting close. And I think the reason why God does this, and this is my own personal opinion, God knows our hearts. If God told us the exact day of the rapture, the, what would we do? Even as Christians, let's be honest, we would goof off to the very end, right? Mm -hmm. Five minutes before the rapture, all of a sudden we start, hey, it's time to be a Christian. So so God knows that, right? And so, so uh, he doesn't tell us exactly when. However, dare I say, he loves us. He doesn't want us caught off guard. Two thirds of this book deals directly or indirectly with Bible prophecy. He wants us to know the future, but what it does is these future events aren't there to freak us out and get us immobilized or get us apathetic or get us uh, to uh, stop and hide out in the hills and run. No, it's to get us excited. The reminders from God, including what's going on with Israel, including the potentiality of a uh, Psalm 83 scenario, that the rapture has got to be getting close. That's the that's the, the the response that we need to be taking from this. Yeah, I absolutely Amen. agree. And I think you're 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 right on biblically because that's exactly what John tells us in First John chapter two. I mean, right. verse twenty eight says this: "Now, little children, abide in Him, so that when He appears, we may have confidence and not shrink from Him at shame at His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you may be sure that anyone who practices righteousness have been born of Him. So we practice right. righteousness, longing for the day because the return of Christ and the rapture is imminent. It's going to happen at any moment. Yeah. And again, I say this all the time real quick. Uh, uh, hey, when, when, not if, when the rapture happens, Jesus Christ is going to find you doing something. Mm -hmm. Now go back to our immediate context. When you get raptured, uh, he's going to find you as a born again Christian, not speaking up against mass genocide. Just because you didn't want to hear it mm -hmm. or you're apathetic right. or you were being selfish yourself. Is that how you want him to find you? By the way, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was Jewish. Amen. The whole early church that we base our eternal destiny on was Jewish. How could this not be a biblical topic, let alone a moral issue? But here's the deal. Is that really how you want to, uh, oh, Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me from eternal damnation to hell. Thank you for coming back and getting me before hell on earth, the seven-year tribulation uh, kicks in. Uh, and then the way he found you was keeping your mouth shut. Right. On moral issues, on biblical, I, I, amen. And here's the deal, yeah. guys. We we can go like, yeah, that's crazy. Who'd want to do that? That's what's actually happening. Yeah, yeah. And I don't time, know about you, but I do not want to be ashamed at his appearing. It's amen. time to get busy about our father's business. Well, we amen. have a couple of events that are, are coming up that we want to talk about. Uh, Pastor Josh, I know you're gonna you have something coming up this Saturday. 
Yeah, this Saturday, uh, May 18th, I will be in Hot Springs, South Dakota with uh, Pastor J.B. Hickson. We'll be dealing with uh, exactly what we talked about today, the things that are ramping up in our world from globalism to the war in Israel, the false prophet and the Antichrist. So if you're in the uh, South Dakota area uh, or the the states right around there, we'd love to have you join us. And then also uh, we are filling up for our pastor's huddle coming up June 4th, 5th and 6th. Uh, if you haven't registered for that and you would like to join us, please uh, go to olivetreeviews.org and sign up under the Pastor's Huddle tab. It's going to be a great time. And then this coming Saturday, the 18th, I'll be in Coors Gold, California, just north of Fresno uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. It looks like it's a beautiful place. Uh, I spoke to the people out there. They're excited. Come out and join us. And then Pastor Billy, you came up with something here at the last minute uh, that we're <laughs> going to travel. Why don't you tell our audience about that? Yeah, uh, Ken, as you know, uh, you and I and uh, Mondo Gonzalez from Prophecy Watchers, we had the privilege of bringing Bribal Prophecy to uh, Singapore in that area there and uh, in Malaysia. And uh, so I had an invite there from a uh, pastor, and he uh, is wanting uh, faithful Bible prophecy teachers uh, like yourself uh, to come and make an, a spiritual investment in that area. Uh, and and that uh, and which I thought was fantastic. And not only for him, as it turns out, the plan is to invite other churches, other pastors in that area, so that they can get equipped on these Bible prophecy related issues. So, so yeah, it's uh, I'm excited about it, and uh, it's a uh, uh, an awesome trip. But again, it's it's uh, as you know, Ken, God has uh, opened up the doors for us to be able to not only teach prophecy uh, here in the United States, but we are able to make that investment around the world, uh, and it's 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 exciting. But and, and I'm excited to see the response. You know, if you and I have got to travel many places around the world, uh, and you get to meet the remnant. Yeah. And it's one thing to see the people when they face to face versus an email, phone call, and emails and phone calls. That's great. But man, as you know, Kim, when you're on the ground and you see these Christians hungry hungry for the truth, appreciative, crying, clawing on you, please don't leave, please don't leave. Uh, and then you come back to the States and everybody's, hey, tr- tell me about your fluffy dog uh, back in the third grade or, right. or what? I don't want to hear this. I didn't come here for this. It just it puts the church in America to shame. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I've been so blessed to be able to travel with uh, you and uh, Pastor Tom, Pastor Brandon, and Mondo. It's just been a blessing beyond anything we could yeah. imagine. So. And then uh, on June 27th through the 30th, all three of us will be at the Prophecy Watchers Weekend in Colorado Springs. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, If you missed the last one in Orlando, please come out and join us. It's going to be, uh, I believe, 24 of us will be out there. And it's just a a wonderful weekend of Bible teaching and getting to meet people. And and like you said, it's a great opportunity for the remnant to get together and uh, talk about everything that's going on. So I'm looking forward to that also. Well, Pastor Billy, thanks for joining us this week. We look forward to our time next week uh, for part two. Join us. Uh, Pastor Josh, you want to close us in prayer? Yeah, absolutely. But before that, I want to just say, friends, if you've listened to this, there's two things that we really must keep focused on. Number one, if you haven't trusted in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Believe in him. He died for you and God uh, accepted his sacrifice and proved it by raising him from the dead. The resurrection is proof that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And the only way to receive eternal life is to trust in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. It's a free gift by God's grace. And number two is this. If you've been hearing us, the gospel is deeply important. We must share it. We must proclaim it because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through him. So focus on sharing Jesus with others. And thirdly, I want to bring this forth. We must be praying for one another and for those around the world that are striving uh, side by side with us to proclaim Christ and to rest in him and longing for the day of his soon rapture of the church. Friends, pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ in Asia, in Australia, in Europe, in South America, in Canada, all over the world, because things are hard there and they're going to get hard here too and we must unite in prayer for perseverance and the grace of god to give us endurance in these last days thank you so much for joining us today and until next time keep looking up for your redemption trust near